Alright. Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, I hope you guys have a... Um, it's week six already and I do hope that um, um, your past five weeks with CS and then has been quite enjoyable. We have been... We are now nearing the half of the semester and I, at this point you guys actually have learned a lot and I do hope that whatever that you have, guys have learned in the past few weeks, you guys don't forget lah, even till the end. Um, okay, so today we'll be talking about dictionaries. Dictionaries, as you guys recall, is basically the so the special. It's basically like a list, but then um, for when a list index is basically numbers, in the the index in a dictionary can be different. It can be any uh, immutable values that you guys want. So we'll be. Um, Discovering the characters and behaviors of a dictionary in this uh, week's tutorial through this exercise. I think the prof has covered quite a lot here on the characteristics of a Python dictionary. So I think it's good that we can actually go through the questions one by one. So I mean, I've prepared these vid... Uh, oh no. What did I prepare here? Um, oh. Okay, got reset. Uh, oh, yeah. Hmm. Well, let me just copy the. Let me just copy it first, I guess. Hmm, okay. okay, I'm not so sure like, what's happening here. Anyways, let's just go through it again. So for those of you who haven't prepared tutorial, it's okay. Just uh, go along. We'll do this together. As usual, if I, I prompt for a response, just like uh, answer in the Zoom chat. If you guys don't feel comfortable, it's okay. So I, I guess it's the first thing. Uh, like, um... This is our first uh, question where we have a tuple of tuples. So if you can see, right, um, we have a tuple A here where the tuple, each box has like another tuple, a pair in pairs. Now the question is what happens if we convert this A into a dictionary? Um, anyone want to answer? It will return the tuple of all the key values and uh, the keys and values are two different, one tuple and one list. Uh. Um, uh, uh, can you explain more about it? Like keys, your keys will be, uh, your keys will be A, B, and 1, right? Mm -hmm. So you will return a tuple containing A, B, and 1. It will print a top. It will print the first line. Line seven will print A, B, and one. Uh. Oh no no no! Uh, line two. I'm asking about line two. You just. Oh, you will, the the keys will be A, B, and one. Uh, then the values will be two, three, and four. All right. Uh, yes. Uh, basically that's yeah. Cor correct. Correct. So if you can see right, um, I think this is uh one of the most important thing. Uh, one of the important things is that when um. Um, you can't you can create a dictionary from a tuple or a list, but then there's a requirement here, which is that the first requirement is that um, it should be a list of pairs. So it should, if you can see right, there are couples here, a couple, a couple, a couple, and when it's already in a very correct data uh, structure or form, right, then you can actually create a dictionary. So as uh Bingson mentioned earlier. Um, when it is in pairs, the first key value of the pair will serve as the keys of to the dictionary, and the the values at index one will serve as the values to so the pair. 
hence we get this dictionary over here. So when we print it, uh, what we get is a dictionary of A, B, and 1. Okay. Can, can you do the same with, with list? Like say if you have a list of lists or tuple of lists. Uh, in fact, we can. The next example is using list actually. So this is the second example. Uh, I have a list, right? This one is a list. In fact, the in fact the key here is a tuple. And then I, I I can actually create the same dictionary over here. And when I print it, it's also the same. I think maybe the interesting question here: What if it's a combination, right? Then let's try law. So uh, open Python to the say so, uh say uh use the same uh code. It's just that I change the structure. Maybe uh the out a top of lists. Um and yes, it also works as well. So in this case you see right it's a tuple of lists and yes it can be converted to a dictionary. So I think the moral story here is that it doesn't matter la, like what the data structure it is. As long as it is, um, you know, like it is a sequence and inside the sequence is like another sequence and in each item is a pair, it should work. So this one is the other way around where we have a list of tuples and it also works. I think now the interesting question is that what if like inside the list we have like a combination of like a list and a tuple here, but still in pairs whether it works or not. So like we have a list. So we have, uh, um, this is the original list over here. And the first item is a list and the second item is a tuple. And we convert the dictionary, it even still works. Even when you are just like combining, mixing things with lists and tuples. So as long as inside your sequence is that there are pairs, Pair, 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 regardless of its form, whether it's a list or a tuple, then you can convert it to a dictionary. Any questions here? Thumbs up if there are no questions. Will we will return error if one of the keys is mutable? Uh, short answer is yes, it will. Um, let me see whether there's an example of it. Yes, it will produce an error. So, yeah, I don't think it's here, but yes, it does, it will produce an error. Let me try to find an example about that. Okay, okay. So, um, we'll try, we'll go this one first. So this is the next part of the assignment, right? Uh, the next part, like this. Oh, actually, I'm, yeah, it should be. Hmm. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we have here a list of lists. Again, we agree that we can actually form a dictionary here. And then, um, the way we actually uh, collect values from a dictionary is very the same as list, but then like instead of like using number index, we actually use the tuple. Uh, we use the keys. So in this case, when the key is a tuple, right, then we should insert the value of the tuple, which is somewhat impractical. Uh, that's why it's very important for you guys to like actually use good names as keys. Okay, next up, you can also iterate through a dictionary. However, however, I think the, uh, what's important here is that when you iterate through the value of a dictionary, you should be very careful of what you iterate. So if you want to iterate through the value of the keys, right, it's very important for you to put like dot keys. If you want to iterate through the values of uh, the dictionary, then it's important to put dot values. And if you want to iterate both, 
you do dot items, but then you need to, you kind of need to use k comma v for it. So let's try. If I iterate through the value of keys, like for key in dictionary v dot keys, uh, I'll iterate through the value of keys. So the value of keys here is uh, one and the stop over here. So one and then two, three. The so same with values, if value is going to be like A and four. Because, oh, because, because this is the values. Now for items, right, it's a bit unique. If you can see right here, it, we actually declare two variables instead of one, variable K and variable V. Um, the reason being is that because like when you iterate through the items, right, items will be, will actually be more of like this. Lah. So dict V dot items will be, a list or tuple, whatever, of pairs of keys and values, keys and values, so on. So when you iterate through this item, right, you are actually iterating through this uh, pairs. Hence, when you actually in your for loop, right, you in your for loop, you declare two variables. Um, Python will automatically uh, assign the first value to this and the second value to this. Lah it will automatically break the pair for you into the variables. So in this case, uh, we're we're gonna print K and V. So this is the value of K and V, one and A, and print, and print. Okay, uh, any questions so far? Um, hi, can you explain the term keys again? Um, the keys, oh, they're basically this, uh, this part over here, the ones in orange. Those are keys. You remember if it's a list, right? If it's a list, the, the keys, the supposed keys are numbers. Uh. So for a list, it's just going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is the default value. Like you cannot change, change it at all. This is the, like the supposed keys but then when it's a dictionary the keys can be anything lah. like uh, alpha gamma theta some stupid scribble an apple a uh, banana and the values that anything you want lah. this is the keys and the keys is used to access the value inside the dictionary. Remember accessing a value like sequence and then like the brackets and then the index. When it's a dictionary, you don't use the index, but then you use the keys, the key. Hence, when you actually do this, right, you are, what you're doing is actually you're just taking all the values of the keys over here. Aaron, I have a question for the KB if, for line 13, right? Every mm -hmm. time if you say you if say you want to print uh print KB or print something, right? Does mm -hmm. it actually create a tupper behind the scene before it prints in a system? Um Um no, this is not a tapo. Um the brackets here is uh, only like the brackets for the function print. Oh. Like this is the brackets for the function, mm. uh, not the tuple function, not the tuple mm. brackets. Any questions so far? Oh wait, I saw one in the chat. I'm so sorry, I cannot see. After conversion, is the tuple still immutable and the list mutable? Uh, what do you mean by like, is the tuple still immutable and the list mutable? I mean like, those are like the inherent char 
characteristics of a tuple and a list. Like tuples will always be immutable and a list is mutable. Okay. Uh, if there are no questions, I'll just move on. Um, this is fun. Oh, I cannot. Let me annotate. So okay, next is uh, I think this one is quite self-explanatory. Uh, it's actually the lead. So I do hope uh, delete means like you're just basically deleting things. Uh. In this case, you can actually delete an, an object, a box in the dictionary. The way you do it is simply by writing del, dict, and the uh, index that you want to remove. So in this case, I'll remove two, three, and it's gone. Okay. So it's not even null, okay? It's just gone. So what happens here, right? Uh, if you actually like, after deleting, right? When you try to call the dictionary, if you try to, at, if at this place, you try to call tick B two, three, this will produce an error. Because technically, uh, this item over here, right? No longer exists in the dictionary. It no longer exists. So um, sometimes it can come in handy, but sometimes it can be dangerous as well. And the next part is commented out. As usual, it means that there must be an error. Can anyone tell me what is the error? Like, why is it an error? Feel free to unmute yourself or just write in a Zoom chat. I think my question is more like, correct. Uh, basically, um, dictionary does not have a natural number index. So in this case, you just referring to the keys. Uh, and if in the keys, there's no number two, then technically it doesn't exist. Even if like there's one item, right? You cannot do like dict zero, even if there's an item on index zero. Okay, my question is more like, do they go into the dictionary as a tuple and a list? Or is it they just become keys and values? Or they just become keys and values? Because dictionaries are like completely different diction, uh, data structures. So can we slice dictionary? The answer is no, you cannot slice dictionaries. Unfortunately, you cannot slice dictionaries. Okay. So yeah, in this case, when I print the P, it's just gonna be given, give me this, okay? Okay, uh, yeah, just, a rem just remember like, when you convert like a list to a dictionary, uh, a, diction a list or a dictionary or a tuple or a dictionary or any sequence of dictionary, it stays as a data, data, it will stay as a dictionary as a data structure. It's a data structure and its own. Um, okay. Uh, this one tells me to go to back back to A, so I'm gonna go back to A. Okay, so here in this case, all right, um, I'm gonna print the, you can, okay, this part, right, it just teaches us basically, you can convert your keys and values into a tuple or a list, lah, okay? So in this case, see, like, this one is the keys, This one is the keys. And this one is the tuples. Uh, this one is the values. Okay, just remember that. Okay, now go to C. C is here. So this is C, uh, we have a dictionary here. Now I think there is that we're gonna talk about the mutability part of a dictionary, okay? The mutability part. So um, again, here we have a dictionary. See, one, four, and then like at index one, at key one, it will point to another dictionary. And you need to remember, right, dictionaries are mutable. Then I do a copy here. Right. 
I I print and I do a dictionary copy over here, right? Now the question is like, uh, after line five and six, what will be the value of dictionary C? Can anyone tell me? Just write it in the Zoom chat. After line five and six, what will line seven print? This one is very similar to lists. All right, thanks, thanks, Shanson. Still the same as line two. Uh, all right, so there's someone that says it's going to be the same as line two. There's a Jansen that say like oh, one will change to two nine. Oh, Malf uh, Matthew as well thinks that way. Okay, so we'll just see. So first we do this dictionary D at four will change to nine. So what's going to happen is that the value is going to change to 9, as you can see. So I'll just highlight it. It's going to change to 9. All right. Then the next part is dictionary D1 to 2. will change to 9 as well. Dictionary D1 and then going to 2. It's going to change to 9. Right, and then when I print dictionary C, um, the value of 9 here has changed. Okay. So I think, okay, I think you guys might be confused again, but basically this is just like a list where in this case, like these two dots are actually the same dots. These two dots actually store the address to another dictionary in this object space. So it does not actually store the actual dictionary. It just stores the address to that dictionary. So whenever this dictionary is called, right, it can just like simply go to this dictionary and access it. So it never actually stores the dictionary. So when the this particular dictionary over here is being accessed by someone else, say from this particular dictionary D, then what? Well, whichever list tuple, whichever data structure, say it's a list or it's another dictionary that's connected to this particular dictionary, the value will also change. Okay. Any questions on the mutability, even the mutability part of dictionaries? Sorry, can you go through line six again? Okay, I can. So, um, yeah, I see, like, I think what, okay, what needs to be remembered, remem remembered is that when I do copy over here, right, when I do a dictionary copy here, what I, I, I do copy identically, right, and then um, for this particular point, right, this particular dot, what I copy is not the dictionary that is inside this, inside this block, but I copy the address, lah. So when I go at line six over here, dictionary one, dictionary D one, two, this part over here can be represented by a, a dot that represents this. So when I index two again, right, it means that uh, this part over here will access this particular small box over here, the box nine. So uh, when I change that to nine, it will just like simply like change to nine. And then when I print dict C, it means I'll just print whatever that's the current state it is. So what if you did dict D equals to one equals to nine? I mean, I mean, basically you are just replacing the pointer address with nine lah, and basically it cuts off the link. 
So if I edit the code here, like this, right? Uh, here, I'm just replacing. Oh. Oops, yes, my bad. So it should be this one. So basically cutting off the, re, uh, replacing the address with nine. Okay. Why doesn't line five affect big C? Uh, like, isn't the value for big C to be nine as well since they affect each other? No, they don't. Um, okay, again, uh, I think you, you, uh, we need to understand that this is a copy, right? This is a copy. So we've copied the values of big C to big D over here, right? When we do a copy, right? Um, when we do copy, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, it, if the value is just like, you know, like numbers or strings, or we call it primitive, right? It will just create a new object. So it will not affect the old dictionary whenever there's any changes, right? But then again, yes, dot copy is actually a shallow copy. So it will just copy the first layer. So if inside the dictionary, there's any mutable data structures such as list or dictionaries, it will not be perfectly copied. It will just copy the address. So what's the point of doing of dot copy if you will affect eventually affect one another, right? Sometimes your dictionary does not have a dictionary inside of it, okay? It's not common that it's not every day that you have a dictionary inside a dictionary. Sometimes you just you'll just have a dictionary where all the values are primitive values. So when you copy it over, right, it will be safely copied over. There's no leakage if you want to say like that. Yes, so the primitive objects are copied, but the other data structures, for other data structures, the addresses are copied. Okay, so don't be disheartened that the copy is not perfect. Life is not perfect. And sometimes you gotta accept with it and roll with it. Any other questions? The point of copy, yeah lah, sometimes, sometimes, your dictionary just contain primitive data, primitive data types such as string and integers. So when it's primitive, it should be no problem. You can just copy it over and make a perfect replica. Okay, I think I'll just quickly wrap up. So here you can also do a delete. Remember the delete earlier? This is a delete a part of the box. If this, if you do this right. You completely delete the entire thing. So you delete the dictionary. Poof. Poof. It's completely gone. And yeah, when you print, it's, it returns a name error because it's not defined. Okay. Uh, are there any parts that I have missed? I feel like I missed something, but I cannot tell. No, I don't think I missed anything. All right, any questions? Are there any questions regarding dictionaries? Okay, I think the fun part, I think just a little bit, uh, a little bit that's uh, outside the topic is that um, uh, the code actually shows you how to iterate through a dictionary, right? By dot keys, dot values, dot items, right? But I think the question is that what happens if, what happens, right? What happens if uh, I iterate through the dictionary alone without any of the methods we had? So if I just like for bar in tick B, what do you think is going to happen? Actually, this it, uh, can anyone just in the Zoom like tell me like what do they think is gonna happen if um, we print for far in dig B print far? Do you think what's gonna happen?
You will print a tapo. Um, okay, Bingsan says print the tapo. Any other opinions? If you don't know, just say don't know. It's perfectly fine to not know things. Don't be shy about it. They'll print the whole list, not sure. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay to be not sure. Just try to predict what's going to happen here. What happens if you print variable indic B? Okay, um, yeah, just like side note for Nicholas, yes, if you modify a list within a dictionary, even in copy, the original dictionary will be... The original dictionary is technically never modified because in the original dictionary, it has the address to the list. It doesn't have the list. So technically, the original dictionary is not modified at all. But then, what happens inside the address, inside that list, is modified. Okay, Beth, you say error. Chances say only print the first item. So what happens? Okay, so the answer is it's gonna be. Let's just see. Ah. So this is the output. If I print. Okay. So in fact, what happens here is that uh, I'm printing the keys of the dictionary. Okay. So I think this one is a little bit unintuitive and it, sometimes right, what happens with students when they panic during an exam, when they want to just iterate through a dictionary, they'll just do like for var in dictionary B and somehow it doesn't work. Because if you iterate through a dictionary, right, what you iterate through are actually the keys. Okay, by the default, dictionary B is the keys of the dictionary. It's not intuitive, but that's, that's the thing. Right? It's not intuitive, then you kind of need to know that when you iterate through a dictionary B, right, what you print, it, what you iterate through is actually the keys of the dictionary. So not a tuple of the list. It's not the values, but it's just simply the keys. So what does, what implications does this have? Okay. So when you try to check a value, right, um, say you want to do like an if statement, if value A in dict b do something so what this means is that i'm trying to check whether value a is in the keys of dictionary b okay emphasis on keys sometimes we just find like i just want to see like hey whether value this particular value is inside the values of the dictionary if you do this right it's not going to work because it does not check for the values in the dictionary it will just check in the keys. So if you want to check values, make sure that you do dot values uh, brackets. Okay, make sure. If you don't do this, if you just uh, do this, it will be uh, equivalent to dot keys. Okay, any questions? If there are no questions, thumbs up. So dig B is like keys. Um, correct, somewhat correct. So if you use dictionary B as a sequence, right, in a, it, in a for loop or in checking things like this, if A in sequence, it will behave as, uh, it will only behave like the keys, not behave like a dictionary. When you, yeah, okay, I think that's a very good line. So if the dictionary is, uh, is put in a situation where it needs to behave as a sequence, the sequence will be the keys. Yes, a list of keys. All right. So that's the end of the first part. I think the second part is, the second and third part is basically questions. I, I'm not interested in going to the third part, actually. Third part is just like, it's just a waste of time. <laughs> okay. I think we'll just go to the second part. Lah. Um, which, um, I think we're just going to spend five minutes or ten minutes on this. I'm going to break you guys into breakout rooms. 
Um, I, if some of you have done this, good. If he, some of you haven't, then try to do it. Okay. Uh, let me see whether the breakout rooms are good. Oh wait, uh, let me share this code share first. Uh. Um, so if you guys are, uh, try to do anagram but using dictionary. And if you guys are finished, just share in the code share. Okay, I think. Okay, I think it's good. So once you're done, just uh, copy your code to code share. And uh, okay, one more thing, right? One more thing is that in this particular an anagram, I think the difference between this and the previous uh, assign in assignment tree is that there's a space here. So in this case, NAC RAM is con still considered an anagram for an anagram. So just consider the space as well, okay? A bit different from our assignment that we ignore the spaces, okay? All right, so I'll give you five minutes. Please be back by like 10.47. Okay, uh, just like, can you just write, write your anagram code using dictionary? I believe like when you guys have dictionaries already, it's a blessing for, to do anagram question. At least the uh, right way. Okay, uh, Bingson, thank you for doing the T9. Um, for those of you doing Anagram, uh, okay, wonderful. Ryan, Nick. Okay. Let's go through some answers and see like how you guys attempted to do the question. Uh, okay. Eh, why, is, why gone here? Anyways, for T9, right? Um, T9, I do... Okay, before I go talking about anagram, right? Since we're not gonna do T9, I will strongly, strongly urge you guys to actually go and do T9. Because especially the part D. Part D is actually very good. So please uh do T9 on your own. Cause the T9 is actually like the kinds of questions that you might want you might see in PE already. Although I don't think this will show up in PE1. So probably PE2, but I'm just giving a heads up for you guys to prepare. Okay. Okay, so we'll talk. And what, why do you think it won't come up in PE1? Is it too hard? Or what? Um, mm, I'm not so sure. Did the prof say dictionary got included in PE1? Because I'm not so sure whether he'll include a material that's just mm. discussed like several days before PE. More like it's just the coverage or... I'm not oh. so sure. Oh, okay. Thanks. If it's included, then sure. But if it's, yeah, it's not included, not because it's hard, but because simply, yeah, it's too close to the exam. Thanks, thanks Joseph for uh, clarification. So I think we'll see no anagram. Okay, so here Ryan's code is basically, uh, remove the spaces, wise move. But perhaps what you can do is also uh, convert it to lower as well. So it's consistent. And then you basically have two dictionaries. And then it iterates through the characters in each word. As, and then if the key exists, 
in the dictionary, right? If the key exists, basically I'll just do a plus one. And if it doesn't exist, um, equate it to one. So it, you know, like if it's an empty dictionary, you need to create the key first if it doesn't exist. If it already exists, you know that the values use, you cannot determine that the value should be a number. So you can just safely do a plus one here. You do the same for W2 no space. Um, and if it's equal, return true. I think um, a little improvement here. I don't know, Ryan, if you're seeing this, because I don't know. You can just simply like, instead of doing an if else, you can just simply like return W1 equals to W2. And so I'm saying your code is wrong, but it's just maybe a way, a better way to write it. Maybe it's quite arguable. Yeah, and don't forget to convert this to lower as well. Um, this is one way to do it. Uh, let's see if there's another way. Okay, this one is the same. This one is even more. Okay, next code. Basically, it's even more more simple. Um, no, no, it's okay, it's okay, it's all, all right, it's correct. But I'm trying to figure out, I mean, it's better. Lah. So, but then uh, if you see, right, um, if you actually need the frequency of the characters inside the word, right, his code will some, I, I, I believe, right, I believe, I believe, this is my belief, because I have, not, I have not run the code, will be problematic because see, if there's an A that shows up twice, right, inside the word, say like uh, Apple, there's a double P. It means that in this iteration, right, uh, P will show up twice and get will return us like, get P will give us two, I think. Oh no, no, get, uh... okay, I forgot what get used, uh, but then like, it might double. Nick, are you there? Can you help explain? I mean, I know your code should be there, uh, it should be correct. Is Nick there? Get will get will take the uh, take the value of um of the dictionary where i is the key. So um but the zero beside is is if there is no value for the um for the key yet. Ah uh, okay okay so okay. If, so if there's no value, it will be zero first and then plus one. But if there's something uh. there already, then maybe it will take one and then if. Is if if there's like apple, then it's double p, right? So it will take one, then plus one again. So it will be two. Yeah. Okay. okay. So probably it will work, uh. Yeah. So it's basically tried, a fail. I, I I I tried with one. I tried with um like two examples, and then it worked. Yeah. So okay la, So it's yeah. It's basically a fail safe like this one lah. Basically if mm. else, but this one is like the get method here is your fail safe that or if it doesn't exist then it will give you a zero yes all right wonderful i mean i just knew that i guess i'm learning everything thank you thank you so much nick um i hope the others can also like learn from this example as well so it's a wonderful example if this one is actually pretty nice so yeah, um, basically all the same method lah. Basically, if you have the same dictionary, it's the same. Okay, so um, no other questions for anagram then okay lah. Um, so I guess Bingsen has also shared his code for. Okay, there's there's an anagram code here. Def. Okay, it's a bit long. There's def clear space. Basically removes all the clear spaces. Okay, it's a bit long here. Okay, so again, like uh, you don't really need to convert your string into list actually, cause like um, cause like can your strings are already a sequence. Like, even if you want to convert your list into a string, right? You don't have to do this, right? You can just do like list one, list, 
Vector string. This works as well. And then, yeah, I think this one is uh, well done. Uh, dick one is equal to dick s one plus one. All right. Um, so if it's not the dictionary, you initiate the keys, else you just pass one. If dictionary s one equals to s two, return true, else false. I think I've explained this. You can immediately just like do a return dictionary s one equals to dictionary s two. Okay. So again, you don't really have to convert to a list. This one is actually pretty good, although it could be simpler, I guess. And this one is great. well done. All right, good job, everyone. Uh, for anagram uh, for T9, again, I strongly suggest you guys to do it on your own time. Okay, so, um, I'll, okay, so I think that's the end of today's tutorial. It's very short. Um, I'll stop the recording now.